All right, so we have to compute the nth power of this matrix, which we'll do by the eigenvalue decomposition. So we need to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. So there is no good way of guessing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. We have to do it the hard way. So let's compute. I'll skip some of the technical details. And I'll go straight. Well, you guys will help me a little bit. OK. What's the sum of the eigenvalues? Well, OK. I was, did not mean to point at the trace. I'll do it this way. What's the sum of the eigenvalues? 1. And what's the product of the eigenvalues? Negative 1. So the, equa the characteristic equation is that lambda squared minus the sum of the eigenvalues times lambda minus the product of the eigenvalues equals 0. All right. And the two roots are minus b, 1, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 4, minus 4, so plus 4. So 1 plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 2a, which is 2. OK? So 1 of them is 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2, which is denoted by phi. So that's where phi comes from. So 1 of them is phi. And the other one, so let me just write phi equals 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. So that's one of the eigenvalues. Let's think about the other one. The other one is minus phi plus 1. Do you guys see that? If you do minus phi, then this gets a minus and this gets a minus. So if you do plus phi, so it's, then it, then it becomes the same thing with a minus sign. So the other one, so that's lambda 1. And lambda 2 is, what did we say? Minus phi plus 1. Minus phi plus 1. Now give me just one second. OK. So notice this. So I'll simplify this a little bit. Because notice something from here. So phi, the golden ratio, has a lot of very beautiful properties. But of course, by its very definition, phi squared equals phi plus 1. Do you guys see it? Because it comes from this equation. So phi squared equals phi plus 1. Everybody agrees, right? Dividing both sides by phi, we find phi equals 1 plus 1 over 5. And moving the 1 over here, we get phi minus 1 equals 1 over phi. So far, so good? So this second eigenvalue is minus 1 over phi. Right, that's just so many nice properties. It's easy to see that. You can just you can either follow this or just do a direct verification. So this is minus 1 over phi. So now we have the two eigenvalues, phi and minus 1 over phi. So let me quickly erase the board and compute the corresponding eigenvectors, just because I think that might take just a little bit of space. Okay, now, so one of them is phi, one of the eigenvalues is phi, and the other eigenvalue is negative 1 over phi. Let's start with this one first. We need to determine the corresponding eigenvector. Okay, so we'll do it the null space route, the tail end of the eigenvalue procedure. So subtract 5 from the diagonal, 1, and then 1, and 1 minus phi. So 
So by just looking at the first row, we can tell that it's phi 1. I'm sorry, 1 phi. So you can see it from the first row, and you can confirm that in the second row, the combination 1 phi works as well. 1 phi. So that's the first eigenvector. And here is the second eigenvector. So let's see. So subtracting minus 1. So let's prepare just so that we can write it in. Subtracting minus 1 over 5 from the diagonal leaves us with 1 over 5. 1, 0, 1, plus 1 over 5. And just from the first row, we see that the null space, excuse me, sorry, the null space is phi negative 1. That's right. Because I knew that I would only be paying attention to, thank you, the first row. So phi negative 1. So you can see it from the first row, and you can confirm that in the second row it works as well. It's not immediately clear, but if you go back to the quadratic equation that defines phi, you will actually see that it works. Okay, so now we have our eigenvectors, our eigenvalues, and our eigenvectors. So we can now write the eigenvalue decomposition for the matrix A. Okay, how are you? Hi, good. Would you, we have a class until 7. Oh, I've never seen you here before. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, we I'll leave you alone until Okay, you, yours is at 7? Yes. Okay. Can we take until 5 of 7? Would that be all right? Oh, sure. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Good. That, that gave the board a chance to try. Okay, now we have the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so we can pretty much write the eigenvalue decomposition of the matrix A and even raise it to the nth power. So A equals, let's see, 1 over phi, excuse me, 1, phi, phi, negative 1 times the eigenvalues on the diagonal, phi, negative 1 over phi, and the inverse of this matrix. So this is x, this is lambda, and here comes x inverse. So this will be our task to compute x inverse. For now, I will just write x itself, phi minus 1, and then I'll say that we need to invert it. Okay. Oh. Hey. <laughs> you missed the best part. All right. Now we'll raise. I'll wait for the door to shut. All right. Okay. Now our task is to raise this matrix to the nth power which is very simple. Raising this matrix to the nth power means raising the middle matrix to the nth power, which of course means raising each diagonal entry to the nth power. So you have to be careful. What I just did doesn't quite do it because you also have to raise the negative one to the nth power. And I'm very much on top of this because when I was doing my preparation, I missed that. All right. Great. So now <laughs> we have to do the least pleasant task, which is to invert this matrix. And actually notice something. So you can only notice if you've seen it already. So 1, phi, phi, negative 1, multiplied by itself. And you'll see what happens. 1, phi, phi, negative 1. So just tell me what you get when you multiply this matrix by itself. So how this entry is 1 plus phi squared. Is that right? 
And this one is, is, is also 1 plus 5 squared. Tell me what, off, what the off-diagonal entries are. Zero and zero and zero. So we're just taking a shortcut. So basically, it's almost like its own inverse, you, except instead of getting the identity, you get identity times 1 plus phi squared. So if I were to take this matrix and divide it by 1 plus phi squared every entry, then we would in fact get the identity matrix. So it's a very special matrix that's almost its own inverse. You just have to divide it by 1 plus phi squared. So are you beginning to see this sort of forming slowly? We're almost there. So I will just kind of butcher this identity. So we have, so instead of its inverse, it is itself times one. I'll start writing phi squared plus one. A, <laughs> A to the n. All right, you guys are with me? So now we have this matrix to the nth power. Now, to get f sub n, we just need to multiply a to the n by 0, 1 on the right-hand side and 1, 0 on the left-hand side. So I, will, I think it will turn, the whole thing will turn into a little bit of a mess, but that's more efficient than rewriting the whole thing cleanly. So let me just say that f sub n, f sub n will equal this product. 1, 0, <laughs> this coefficient mixed in front of it, right? And 0, 1. And actually, we already have the answer. F sub n equals this 1, 2, 3, 4, fifth quintuple matrix product, right? And the whole whatever answer you get, you have to divide it by phi squared plus 1. So let's actually see how it works. So when you multiply, I'll do it all in place. When you multiply this matrix by this column, what do we get? Yeah, just this column will just extract the second column of this matrix. So it'll be phi negative 1, phi negative 1, OK? Let's talk about multiplying this matrix by this matrix. This is slightly tricky. You have to be a little bit careful. So this column will get multiplied by phi. So it'll become phi to the n plus 1. And then in the second part, it'll be this multiplied by negative 1. So phi n plus 1, it'll still be 2 by 1, and it'll be negative, negative 1 to the nth power over phi to the n. Okay, we're getting to the right answer. Something's beginning to tell me that maybe this needs to be n plus 1, but we'll see in a moment. Uh, don't worry, I'll be able to edit it in afterwards. No problem. Special effects are that good. Okay, so I think at this point, we're better off now multiplying this by this. So we avoid this 2 by 2 multiplication. So what is this matrix multiplying this matrix? Of course, it'll just extract the first row. So it'll just be this. Very easy to write. All right. And now we just have to multiply this. And it's going to be the sum of phi to the n plus first power minus this with phi to the n minus first power. All right? Uh, there you go. Let's, hopefully I remember. So it's going to be this times phi to the n plus 1 minus negative 1 to the n divided by phi to the n minus 1. 
All right, divided by one over five squared, five squared plus one. This completes our derivation. Let's walk over here and fix it. Is that right? Do you guys remember? Were you retaining? That's what it is? Okay. And there you have it. A very beautiful and vivid application of the eigenvalue decomposition. And we're five minutes ahead of schedule. Are there any questions? All right, I'll leave you with homework then. This is actually quite exciting. I'm about to write down a matrix that's actually very, very important. And you can determine its eigenvalues and eigenvectors by a very similar procedure. So this matrix, if you ever solve the heat equation, heat equation, or the wave equation, I know none of you have taken PDEs yet, but you will soon, and you'll know what the heat equation and the wave equations are, and you try to solve them on the computer by finite differences, this is the matrix that you will get. So it has negative ones, two negative ones. So it has twos on the diagonal and negative ones just off the diagonal. Two, negative one, negative one, and so forth until you get here, negative one, two, negative one. That's the bulk of the matrix. And then the first row is all zeros. And the last row is all zeros. This is the matrix whose eigenvalues and eigenvectors you'll have to determine to analyze the numerical solution to these partial differential equations. And this is called the Laplace matrix, or one of the variations of the Laplace matrix. And the task is to find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And you can convert this eigenvalue problem to a small two by two eigenvalue problem uh, where you will just repeat this sort of this sort of analysis. And you will obtain an answer that's absolutely beautiful. And that's actually might be initially hard to believe that for a matrix this complex, it's n by n. N by n. You can actually determine all of the eigenvalues and all of the eigenvectors analytically. But if you think about how in the eigenvector, how the next entry depends on the previous two, it will be a recurrence relationship in spirit very similar to the Fibonacci procedure, to the Fibonacci relationship, and you'll be able to analyze it in the same way. So a very good problem to leave you with. All right?